The single largest necessity needed to keep people engaged or immersed with a video game is a willing suspension of disbelief for its premise. To have the player willingly set aside the strictly rational part of their brain for the sake of the story. This can be further stretched along with a fundamental tenet all writers should be somewhat familiar with, the rule of cool. That did it. LZ's clear. Commander, bring her down. Roger that. Beginning my descent. Look! Up high! Here she comes! Is the dog rated for atmosphere? Guess we're gonna find out! Hey! Take cover! Most games use it as a brief flourish in their story, some secret sauce to elevate certain moments. For example, a giant titanium brick flying in from orbit to a dead stop, or a robot accurately yeeting you a few hundred feet to progress the level, or using instant transport to the moon to resolve the final conflict of the narrative. However, cool is subjective, so how do we leverage this idea for something that can be different for different people? In theory, it's simple. Don't just do one cool thing at that moment, do multiple different cool things at the same time. This is an epic moment, the music should be swelling to reflect that. The spaceship is going to displace a lot of air, so have props fly around as it moves in. And what is the ship going to do once it stops? Why, it's going to give you a tank, and you're about to go on a fantastic vehicle sequence. Or if you want a more subtle form of narrative progression, perhaps make the sequence a major point where two characters build trust with each other, such as in the case of BT and Cooper. Wind, three knots, heading 274, range 95 meters, projectile mass 89 kilograms. Trust me. Throw. You're welcome, pilot. Good luck over there. Or alternatively, you could just never turn the cool off, giving your player all the tools they need to be the biggest badass possible for the entire duration of the game, like an ultra kill. A winged robot that's fueled by blood and is slaying a path through the nine layers of hell? Sign me up. But be warned, because any possible detraction from what is supposed to be a cool event can snap the player out of it. Frame drops, bugs, janky mechanics, anything that would normally break immersion will kill the mood instantly. Which makes me want to bring up the internet's newest AAA punching bag. As a fair disclaimer, I've not actually played the Callisto Protocol myself for two reasons. First, I don't want to pay full price for it. Second, I don't own a PlayStation to play it on because apparently it doesn't run too well on PC, even top-end ones. This said, I have been watching Let's Plays and have watched other people's reactions to the game pretty closely. And I think it may be a perfect example of a game trying to be cool and immersive the entire time, but falling short for a variety of reasons. So, let's get into it. The Callisto Protocol is a new survival horror game put out by Striking Distance Studios, which is headed by Glenn Schofield, one of the creators of Dead Space. As such, the game had a high bar to meet, which it frankly fell short of. And I don't think that's for lack of trying. The music and ambiance sound good, it's a fairly story-driven game that seems decently well-written, and the level design seems pretty good too, if a bit linear. The first levels do an excellent job to bring you into the story and setting, getting you into the role of the main character and the shitty situation he's been put into. This is not right, I don't belong here. Listen, you know they call Callisto the dead moon. Dead, just like you would have been if I hadn't fished you out of that wreck. I mean, shit, as far as anyone else is concerned, you are dead. It's time you moved on. Because you're crossing over to a new kingdom. No. My kingdom. No. So whatever it is you're holding on to right there, that's your old life. You gotta let that go. Because your new life is entirely in my hands. Surprise, dead man. Okay. Grab her. Let's go. Your first introduction to combat seems great too. Brutal cinematic action against some infected individual. What the 
fuck was that? But as the game goes on, it doesn't hold up as well. The complaints I've heard are that it's mostly held back by its mechanics and technical issues, as well as not being very scary for a survival horror game. My best explanation for this is that there seems to be only one correct way to play the game. Bonk! 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 You can die fairly easily, and due to the somewhat janky checkpoint system, you'll be repeating sections until you get them right. Most of these sections are combat-oriented too, with a fairly small variety of enemies, most of which are some flavor of walk up and smack you. And when you are in combat, it's a matter of trying to deal with enemies one at a time because the camera in melee combat makes it difficult to switch targets mid-fight. That brutal cinematic combat from the beginning quickly becomes standard fare, and you become desensitized to it due to a lack of variety. As such, it seems like the easiest way to deal with all enemies is to force push them into environmental hazards, which although effective, doesn't seem very fun because there's no strategy to it. Slower points of the game don't seem to have a lot going on with them either, mostly being used to ease the player into new levels. But when they do, they don't do very well at building suspense. There's a lot of crawling through holes or shimmying through narrow gaps where you feel fairly vulnerable, but to my knowledge, there's no payoff for it. What little suspense is built up tends to get ruined by cheap jump scares, most often by a head in a box or these head tentacle things, both of which lock you into a button mashing sequence. And it's a shame, too, that a well-assembled world get held back by gameplay and mechanics in this way, the coolest moments happening in cutscenes rather than in gameplay. But if I were to imagine the Callisto Protocol as a person, I think it'd come off as an edgy goth kid back in high school. It tries really hard to come off as mysterious and something you don't want to fuck with, but at the end of the day it can't back it up because in reality it comes from suburbia and mom drives it around in a wood-paneled station wagon. But the easiest solution to this is to not try and be cool the entire time. Have a baseline of fun gameplay and ambiance first, and then periodically ramp up the cool factor for specific scenes. The Japanese actually have a word for this. Sakuga is a term in animation used to talk about sequences that are noticeably higher quality than the rest, used to highlight a particularly important scene. To jump to another fairly recent AAA game for comparison, Halo Infinite actually does this quite well. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong. Compared to all other Halo games, the sandboxed options are comparatively small, and the open world nature of the game prevents well-crafted vehicle sequences for the bulk of its length. No Scarab fight, no Warthog run. We did get a last minute tank level though, but it does do two things right. The first is perfectly introduced characters and pumps you up for the action which is about to happen in some of the more traditional levels. Our titular protagonist, the big bad, the protagonist wimpy sidekick, the other big bad, the protagonist girlfriend who looks suspiciously like his ex, the other other big bad, and so on. The second is it decently portrays Chief going on a guerrilla warfare campaign against the banished. We may not have gotten as many classic vehicle sequences, but what we did get are banished bases to secure and capture, which can be approached by any means at your disposal, whether you want to approach on foot, roll up in a tank, or fly by all the enemies to complete your objectives. I just wish there were more bases like these and fewer fobs, because the fobs are fairly forgettable. My biggest complaints, however, loop back to the mostly solid but comparatively limited sandbox, and the fact that the biggest narrative reveals happen without your involvement at all. The destruction of the Infinity, Cortana's death, Atriox's supposed death, the damaging of the ring. There's a lot that happened while Chief was floating around in space that I feel should have been gameplay instead of a lore drop. But I will not deny that what we got is still cool and engaging, even if it suffered the side effects of six years of development hell. At least we didn't end up with the hero shooter or the cinematic experience. At the end of the day, immersion is king when it comes to being engaged with games, and if your baseline premise is hard to get sucked into, the rule of cool will not save you if you use it too liberally. And even if your premise and gameplay are solid, it may be best to use the rule of cool sparingly. Only if you decide to ramp it up to 11 will you possibly get away with the non-stop cool factor. But what do you think? What moments in gaming made you say, wow? Or am I dead wrong? Is the Callisto Protocol a masterpiece that I'm not giving a fair shot? Do you think Halo Infinite is the best of the bunch? I look forward to hearing your comments down below, and I will see you in the next one.